Well, as I said, there's a lot going on this uh, Sunday, uh, and I suppose there's a limit to what a man can do, so I'm afraid I can't really talk about mothers and skiaf and men born blind and scrutinies and everything. So I have to choose something. And uh, it is that this gospel, it is the readings that we've just heard, this whole great theme of light. Last week we heard the gospel of the Samaritan woman, uh, the spring of living water within you, Jesus promised. Next Sunday we have the gospel of the raising of Lazarus, life from the death, from death. So we have living water, we have light, we have life from death. And these are all uh, symbols, images for baptism and for faith. Now liturgy and life go together. And yesterday, as I was uh, pondering about this gospel, uh, a friend telephoned me and told me uh, that he was going blind. Uh, this was a great shock for him to discover. He's in his late 50s, and uh, it was a shock for me. And as he described it, uh, if there are any ophthalmologists here, please forgive me if I haven't got this exactly right. But he described it. He said two, two very interesting things. Uh, and he's, uh, what is causing the blindness is that is atrophy of the optic nerve. And the strange thing is that you don't notice it. He didn't think that there was anything the matter with his sight because the brain, as it were, compensates while the nerve atrophies and still manages to enable us to see. But the point will come maybe quite soon, when the nerve is dead, uh, he will no longer see. So he's in the position of seeing at the moment. He was unaware there was anything the matter. He was just there to um, check up that his glasses were, the lenses were right, and then he discovered all this. Uh, that I, it just makes me think of what our Lord says about the Pharisees, not that my friend is the least like a Pharisee, but it made me think that we think we see, they think they see, and in fact, they're blind. They're going blind. The more they reject Jesus, the blinder they go. And then he said another very interesting thing. He's amazingly serene and supernatural about it all. But he said, looking ahead, he said, I think what I will miss is seeing human faces seeing human faces. And yes, our eyes are in our faces, but our eyes are for seeing faces. It's true, there's, there's nothing more expressive, there's nothing more vivid in our whole experience than human faces. Sometimes they're beautiful, sometimes they're distorted by anger and what have you. But we have been given eyes in order to see faces. Now, here's a very interesting thing about this blind man whom Jesus cures. Jesus makes this paste and puts it on his eyes. The paste is, you might say, a symbol of faith. He then says to him, go and wash in this pool, and the pool is called Siloam, which John explains means sent, which is one of the names of our Lord himself. He is the one sent by the Father. Go and wash in this water, which is Christ. So that's a symbol of baptism. But the man... Uh, even when, he, when he, go, he goes and does this and he gets his sight back, but Jesus is not there. He hasn't seen him. And he's, uh, he's asked, where is, this, where is this man who healed you? And he said, I don't know. And only at the very end of the gospel, after he's gone through all these interrogations 
and, and, and uh, upheld his own dignity very well and maintained the truth of what has happened to him with great spirit. Only at the very end, Jesus seeks him out and he actually meets him. And it says, Jesus heard they had driven him away. And when he found him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of man? Sir, the man replied, tell me who he is so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe and worshiped him. At that moment, he sees the face of Jesus. He sees who he truly is, the Son of Man, which is one of John's ways of saying the Messiah. And he worships him. He ha we might say, you know, we can have faith. We can be baptized. But all that is so that we may see Jesus, see the face of Jesus and worship him. You know, the invisible God has made himself visible. St. Paul talks about the glory of God on the face of Christ. And in the church, we, we venerate the name of Jesus, do we not? The holy name of Jesus. We venerate the face of Jesus in icons and paintings. We venerate the heart of Jesus. We venerate the body of Jesus. All these human things, but they are the human things of the Son of God. They are the epiphany, the manifestation, the light of God shining out. To believe is to see a face, to see the face of Christ and the glory of God shining on it. Think of the story of Mary Magdalene in the garden when she's gone to the tomb to, she thinks, anoint the body. And there's this mysterious man there, and he says, what are you looking for? Why are you weeping? And she thinks he's the gardener. She thinks he's the gardener. And then he just says to her, Mary, and she realizes, she recognizes him. She sees him, and she falls down and grasps his feet. Or think of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, there is this stranger walking beside them. They think he's just a fellow pilgrim who's been in Jerusalem. But they're so struck by what he says that they invite him into the pub for a meal and he takes the bread and breaks it and they recognized him in the breaking of bread. Well, this is what faith and baptism bring us. This is when the, the gift of faith and the gift of the Holy Spirit within us flower when, as it were, the f we see the face of Jesus with the eyes of our heart. This is the light of God that shines into our life. There's one thought. Well, here's another. Uh, the very old monks, the Desert Fathers, I don't mean uh, old in years necessarily, but from long ago, said very remarkable things. And one thing they said, was a saying among them, and it connects to this whole idea of light, is it is a greater thing to know your sins than to raise the dead. It is a greater thing to know your sins than to raise the dead. Now, perhaps we secretly think, I, I wouldn't mind raising somebody from the dead, or um, imagine... I'll, I'll mention him because he's not here. Imagine Deacon Tony uh, had the gift of healing, you know, and he just went into ARI or he went to the morgue and just touched a few bodies and they all ra uh, rose from the dead and the whole of Aberdeen became Catholic. It would be, it would be <clears throat> amazing. But the, these wise men say it is a better thing to know your sin than to raise the dead. Because when we see the face of Christ, we are seeing something, someone, 
we are seeing beauty, truth, and goodness than which nothing greater can be conceived. And when we look at that light of Christ, we see our own lack of beauty, our own lack of truth, our own lack of goodness. We see that we are ugly and untrue and ungood in comparison with this fullness of beauty and truth and goodness. That is why part of the Easter experience, part of Lent and Easter, is to know our sins because we know from the love that we see in this face that he is ready to forgive our sins. This is why the sacrament of reconciliation is a part of Lent, a part of Easter. It is a part of the light of God shining in our hearts. One last thing. In the first reading, the story of the anointing of David, the, ch the choosing of him when the prophet Samuel goes to look for the future king of Israel, the great type of Christ that David will be. And we hear the words, God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is a very beautiful thought about faith and baptism, that faith enables us to see as God sees. Both St. Thomas Aquinas and St. John of the Cross, great teachers in the church, they say this, that by the gift of faith, we are able to see reality, see God himself with the eyes of the heart, see the world, see one another as God sees them just as when by the gift when we're given the receive the gift of divine charity divine love grace within our hearts we are able to love as god loves this is our the way we share in the very life of god faith enables us to see as god sees and to love as god loves and so we grow in faith to grow into the vision of God. Now, I sometimes think God has given us two eyes, two eyes. And one with one eye, we must be very realistic about each other. You know, we and realistic about ourselves, but we see all the limits. Sometimes, to be honest, we see someone and we think, well, they're a real menace. Yes, we must be realistic. But there's this other eye, which you might say is an eye of hope, that there is always something more in a person than we can see. And faith enables us not exactly to see that that, what that more is, but to know it is there. So when we start to see as God sees, it means that we don't judge other people. We don't condemn them because there is more in them than we know because what God sees in that person is greater than what by our natural sight we see. And so by faith we say, yes, there is something more. We don't condemn. We wait in patience for God's beauty to be manifest, hopefully, in that person. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. I am the light of the world. None of us would like to go blind, but even if we did, there is this light from God that is offered us and in which we want to walk and to live towards the everlasting light of heaven.